What's going on everybody? Ronnie DiMaggio here, product specialist here at BMW Morristown. That's Austin behind the camera. And in today's video, we are going to be doing a walk around and overview on this pre-owned BMW M3. So this is a 2018 model year M3 and F80. 2018 was the last model year for the F80 M3. The F82 M4 did continue through 2020 or so. Uh, so this is the generation that directly preceded the current G80 generation BMW M3. So this is a really cool car. This has always been a dream car of mine personally, like the attainable dream car has always been the F80 M3. Big, big fan of these cars. And today I'm gonna to tell you guys why I like the F80 so much. We're gonna show you around the F80. We're gonna go over all of the exterior styling elements. We're gonna talk about the performance, what's under the hood and all that good stuff. We're also gonna hop in the interior, give you guys a look inside the car and just bring this F80 to you through video so you guys can check it out with us. So with that said, let's start underneath the hood of the F80 M3. So, in the F80, under the hood, is BMW's S55. It is a three liter twin turbocharged inline six. So the S55 is based on the N55. What BMW does for their M engines is basically, they take the series car engine, like the N55 in this case, they send it over to the M division. The M division does their magic with it and they come back with a totally reworked and unique engine that's always more powerful always a little louder and angrier. So the S55 makes 444 horsepower and just over 400 pound-feet of torque in competition trim. This is a competition pack car. One of the things I love under here aesthetically is this carbon fiber strut base, uh, brace that goes all the way from one strut tower to the other and kind of hoops down under the engine. You can see the air charge air cooler up here. It is water to air intercooler. Unlike the N55 that this engine is based on, which uses a uh, front mount air to air intercooler, the S55 gets a little more high tech air to water intercooling, and then you see the charge pipes going right down in there. So cool looking engine bay. Love the carbon fiber strut brace. One of my favorite things about the F80. So great engine under here, the S55. It's also been proven to be one of the more reliable M3 engines um, to date. The S55 holds up pretty well as a pre-owned car, really well actually. Uh, super solid engine, so the S55 is great. Let's talk about the exterior styling. We'll start up front and you can see that the F80 is a little bit more subdued than the G80. Um, it's maybe a little bit prettier of a car. The G80 is definitely more aggressive. The F80 um, is a little prettier, a little sleeker, uh, not quite as aggressively styled, but still very aggressive. You do have your dual slat M kidney grills, your little M3 badge in the front there. And you of course have a bumper that is unique to the M3. The F30 M Sport, for example, has its own unique bumper, and then the F80 is kind of one step above that. So good looking front end. If we come around to the side of the car, we can take a look at these wheels, which are one of my absolute favorite things about the F80. These are the 666M style wheels. It is a 20 inch wheel, and this is one of the best wheel designs I think BMW's ever done. The 666 is only found on compact cars. It looks so good with kind of the honeycomb look. And then behind the wheel, you see a blue painted M Sport caliper. It looks like a four piston. And then you have your two piece rotor there for heat dissipation, which BMW does in the G80 as well. G80 does have bigger calipers, um, but the two piece rotor design has been carried over from the F80 to the G80. Running Pilot Super Sport tires, Michelin tires, the 265 wide in the front. Another signature of the M3 is the side gill. You can see it again on the F80 with the M3 script in there, which looks really nice, especially on this car. It's black sapphire metallic, it's all black. So you have the kind of black bicolor on the wheels, the black trim around the side vent looks really nice. If we take a look at the mirrors, it is an M winged mirror cap, which you've been seeing on the M3 for a while now. Just adds an extra kind of little flair to the M3. It's a subtle touch. Uh, but looks really nice. Speaking of subtle touches, that's actually a perfect angle right there. If you look at the hood, you have the Power Dome. This is the last M3 to get the Power Dome, signature Power Dome hood. Uh, the G80 has a pretty aggressive hood as well that's unique to it, rather than the standard three or four series, but the F80 has that Power Dome, which I really like. Uh, M-wing mirror caps. You also have a carbon fiber roof on the F80, uh, which looks really cool and obviously helps to bring the center of gravity down in the car. Nice lightweight roof. The side skirts are unique to the F80. 
The fenders are unique to the F80. You can see, especially in the back, when we go around the back of the car, the wide fenders look so good. Front fenders are flared as well. Hoffmeister kink, as you would expect. So really classic BMW design. The F80 uh, was kind of the pinnacle of like that E chassis, even though it's an F chassis car. Um, of those, I should say, classic BMW design elements, and now the G Series is kind of going on its own path in a new direction that's great in its own right, but the F80 was kind of like the culmination of, of years of BMW design language all coming together in a modern package. Looks so good, one of my favorites aesthetically. If we come around to the back of the car, the good stuff continues, looks really good back here as well. So this being a 2018 model has some different looking uh, taillights than you would get on a 2015, for example. The F80 did get an LCI uh, about halfway through its life cycle that updated these taillights into that kind of swooping look as opposed to the pre-LCI, which was the 2015 model that just had straight lines. So the LCI taillights do look good. I know a lot of people upgrade those aftermarket anyway if you have a pre-LCI car. Um, most of them get the LCI taillights as an aftermarket added addition anyway. Little spoiler up here, very subtle. And then of course you have your M quad tip exhaust. Just like every M3 before it, well actually, every M3 since the E46 before it, um, if I'm not mistaken, has that M quad tip exhaust, which looks really nice. A Little bit different diffuser, and of course, a unique rear bumper. And this angle that you guys are looking at now is one of the best for the M3 to show off its wide fender, so you can see from where you are, hopefully, uh, that the fenders kind of fall out a little bit more. They kind of waterfall off to the side of the car and, and hug that wheel, so it looks really good. If you throw some spacers on this car, a higher um, offset wheel or lower offset or different offset wheel, the proper offset, you can get some really nice fitment with these cars that look so, so good with that flared fender. So that is going to do it for the exterior styling of the F80 M3. Let's take a look at the trunk space as well as the rear seat, and then we'll hop up front and go over some of the interior aspects. All right, so here we are around back of the F80 M3. You can pop the trunk, just give you guys an idea of what you're looking at as far as storage space. I can actually speak to the usability of the um, trunk and rear seat kind of area in this car. I have an F30 335, um, definitely a step below the F80 M3 in terms of performance, but built on the same chassis, so the uh, back seat and trunk space is going to be the same. And I can tell you that the trunk is super usable, surprisingly big for a car this size, as is the rear seat, which you'll see in a minute. So super usable trunk space. You have your little toolkit off to the right and some netted off storage areas to make things a little bit easier, but great trunk space in the F80. That continues in the back seat. If we pop open the rear door and hop in the back seat, you can see that I, sitting behind my own driving position, uh, I'm about five foot nine, sitting behind myself, I have tons of leg room. I can slouch all the way down if I wanted to or sit straight up and I have headroom, leg room to spare. So super comfortable in the back of the F80. I do have heated rear seats. I have my Merino leather with integrated armrests. So nice place to be and especially in the compact cars. You have these little holes in the back of the seat, which just looks cool for back seat passengers. Kind of stick stick your hand through there and mess with the driver if you want to. Probably shouldn't do that when they're driving, but it's just cool to have a hole in the back of the seat. I mean, that's the coolest thing ever. You can also get in the aftermarket these carbon fiber seat backs, which look really cool as well. So there's a lot um, going on in the back seat. It's pretty standard fare. I mean, it's not super heavily upgraded from like an F30, for example, but it does feel that extra bit special because you have those one piece seats uh, or seat backs in front of you and you have the holes in the seat and the perforated leather. So just a cool back seat for a cool car. So let's hop up front now and go over some of the driver focused interior stuff, as well as some of the performance metrics, how you adjust the M settings and stuff like that in the front seat. All right, so here we are on the interior of this 2018 BMW M3. So first things first, I always like to talk about this with three series and M3s, the ergonomics, because they're fantastic, best in the car industry, bar none, three series ergonomics or M3 ergonomics, are the standard as far as I'm concerned for vehicle ergonomics. Starting off, both armrests are at the same height, so your elbows rest at a comfortable even height. The steering wheel feels fantastic. The uh, F80 and F30 M Sport steering wheel is one of the best BMW ever did. Nice three-spoke design with the M tricolor stitching. Feels awesome in the hands. 
The seats are extremely comfortable and in this compact car, I believe the seats are a little tighter. So the side bolsters hug you in really well. Super tall um, um, thigh bolsters as well, which prevent your legs um, from sliding around. So you could be generating some serious G's in a corner and this seat is gonna keep you just in place. Also, ergonomically, the belt line is lower than it is in newer cars, being an F chassis car. So that low belt line helps with visibility and helps you feel um, like you're kind of having a more commanding view of the outside of the car, which is great. And another thing about the driving position in this car is that hood bulge looks so darn cool when you're sitting in the driving position and you see the bulge of the hood, the power dome. Just another uh, thing to let you know that you're driving something special with something special under the hood as well. So ergonomically, fantastic. As far as materials, also really, really good. You have a leather wrapped steering wheel. You have some stitching on the dash, some nice carbon fiber trim, some nice, really nice actually merino leather on the F80, which you couldn't get on an F30 unless you did something with the individual program. Um, but the leather feels great. All the plastics, there's nothing hard touch and like scratchy and uh, kind of cheap feeling. Everything feels really nice in here as it should being an M car. This particular car just has the extended black merino leather. However, uh, on the F80, if you order the full merino leather, you can even get your glove box and this sort of area wrapped in leather with some stitching that looks really, really nice as well, as well as these upper door cards. So you could get that in the F80 as well. However, the way that this car is spec is the more durable option. Obviously, if you have leather here, it's gonna get scratched uh, sometimes if something bumps into it. So this is the more durable kind of everyday option if you're willing to sacrifice that kind of stylishness of the merino leather dashboard. As far as tech, uh, M-Tech specifically, in the newer cars, in the G80 for example, um, or the M8 for example, if you wanna watch one of our videos talking about M-Tech, we just posted a video on the M8. The newer uh, M cars have a setup button in the center console. In the F80, you have three individual buttons, one for your engine configuration, one for your uh, suspension or damper configuration, and another one for steering. So you can adjust those all individually, there's no setup button to press and then pull up the menu on the iDrive screen. So a little bit different, works just as well though. And it's kind of cool to have these three individual buttons anyway. You can also see if you want to take a quick look into the gauge cluster. When I press these buttons, you can see that I can cycle through different settings. So that's the engine, the transmission, and then the steering as well. One thing I'll say about the steering, uh, if you guys are curious about driving this car, um, the steering is super heavy in that Sport Plus mode, which feels really cool, makes it feel like you're driving something substantial and with like some meat to it. Um, super heavy steering, which I'm personally a fan of, but if you don't like that, you can dial it down to comfort and it lightens right up. Uh, also, as far as M-Tech, if we want to go into the My Vehicle settings, you can go in here to configure your M1 and M2 buttons. So on the G80 or the uh, M8, M5, something like that, you have those buttons on the steering wheel. On the F80, they are still on the steering wheel. They're just a little more subtle right here, M1 and M2. Does the same thing. It's just a configurable drive mode setting. So here we're configuring M1. We can set everything to comfort or efficient. Um, you can turn on or off your dynamic stability control, your transmission, how you want the head up display to look, so on and so forth. Same thing for M2. So you do still have the configurable M1 and M2 buttons, even in uh, the F80. I believe the F80 was the first car to have that. I don't think the E90 M3 or E92 or something like that had that. So cool to see that in the F80 being a previous generation car. Um, also, one of your M settings is your drive logic selector. So you can adjust the shift speed of your dual clutch, seven speed dual clutch transmission. This car is a DCT rather than a manual. Um, so you can shift, uh, adjust how quickly the car shifts. And when you have it cranked all the way up, it really snaps off those shifts like crazy. So DCT is a really cool transmission. My taste is the six speed manual, but the DCT, if you want an automatic, it's as good as it gets. It's up there with uh, the PDK and stuff like that from Porsche who makes a fantastic dual clutch transmission. The NDCT is um, up there as well. Feels really good, really competitive transmission, shifts super fast. So those are your M settings. As far as M specific things in the F80, the gauge cluster is unique to the F80. You have that gray faced gauge cluster, which looks super cool. Uh, BMW tradition to do a gray faced gauge cluster in the M cars. You also have a unique heads up display. If I put the car on M2 here, you can see that I get my rev counter up there in the heads up display. It doesn't show up super well on video, but just trust me when I tell you that it looks really cool. You also have carbon fiber trim, which you could not get on an F30, only on the M3. 
you do have unique seats. Uh, even in the normal M3, you have unique seats. The Comp gets its own seats. Additionally, those are the ones that have the um, pass-through in the seat. The F80 also gets a unique steering wheel. The F30 M Sport steering wheel is identical on the outside, but this little trim piece on the F80 is hollow, whereas on the F30, it's um, solid plastic. So very minor difference, but a difference nonetheless. You do get merino leather, like I said, in the F80, which you do not get in the F30. So it's a bunch of solid, uh, small things that kind of culminate together to generate a unique feeling cabin for the F80 as opposed to the F30. Uh, it does feel familiar as an F30 owner. I sit in here and everything, I feel right at home. However, you can also tell it's a lot nicer in here than my car is with the carbon fiber, the merino leather, the gray face gauges. So if you're kind of on the fence, maybe between like an F30 340 or 335 and an F80, the F80 is definitely that step up that you're going to be looking for. It feels, it feels like a, a step up in terms of the interior. You also have unique paddles for the F80. So like I said, definitely a step up. Um, that said, let's quickly mention what's going on with the iDrive screen. So this being a 2018, I believe this is iDrive 6 that this car is running. It's definitely not iDrive 7 that we're using in the current cars and certainly not iDrive 8. That said, great system. iDrive 6 works well. It is a touchscreen and it's uh, more responsive than some uh, of our competitors screens uh, even today. So uh, BMW back in 2018 was doing a great job with infotainment systems. iDrive 6 is super easy to use. You do have a Harman Kardon sound system as standard in the F80, which sounds awesome, sounds really good. And you have Bluetooth. This car does have Apple CarPlay. You have built-in nav, all that good stuff. So even though this is a previous generation car, maybe you're uh, really looking forward to the G80's iDrive 7. Um, if that's the only thing that's differentiating the cars for you, iDrive 6 is totally fine. It works well and it's a system that I could definitely use every day. Really useful system, touchscreen, like I said. So iDrive 6 is perfectly adequate for the F80. In fact, it's better than adequate. It's a good system. Um, so all that stuff said, that is going to do it for the interior of the F80. In conclusion, great place to be, really nice materials, feels like a sports car. It is a step up above the F30, just a really cool interior that I am personally a big fan of. So that's gonna do it in here. Let's hop outside and wrap up. All right, so that is going to do it for this walk around and overview of the 2018 BMW M3, the F80. Like I said, pleasure for me to spend the day or the afternoon filming this car for you guys. I am a huge fan of the F80, and if you're watching this video, chances are you are too. So awesome car, and I'm glad that we were able to share it with you guys. If you did enjoy the video, please drop a like down below, drop a comment, and subscribe to the channel, please, if you think we deserved it. Follow us on social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at BMW of Morristown. Come check us out at 111 Ridgedale Ave or give us a call at 973-455-0700. Click the link in our description to check out our current inventory. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, drop them down in a comment below. We read all the comments. We respond to all the comments on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all that stuff. So we're super responsive on social media. So get in touch with us if you want. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.